Welcome friends, welcome to physics in 20 minutes. In this video, we are going to learn some of the problem solving tactics which we use with Newton's laws of motion. We are also going to check some of these tactics with the famous horse and cart problem. Prerequisite video for this video are video number 7 to 11, 27 and 28. That means you have to be well versed with vectors and Newton's laws of motion. So here is our famous horse and cart problem. A horse is hitched to a wagon. Horse pulls the wagon. Since the wagon pulls back on the horse just as hard as the horse pulls on the wagon, why doesn't the wagon remain in equilibrium no matter how hard the horse pulls? For example, if the wagon is at rest, if the horse pulls the wagon forward, by Newton's third law, wagon pulls the horse backward. Why still the entire system accelerates forward? Before we answer this problem, let us learn some of the problem solving tactics using Newton's laws and then we can utilize some of those tactics to solve this problem. So let's look at some of the problem solving tactics on Newton's laws of motion. The first step towards solving problems using Newton's laws is you isolate the body. You choose the body to which you are applying the Newton's laws. In a given problem, there could be number of interacting bodies. You have to be very clear in your mind that which body you are applying the Newton's laws. Sometimes if the picture is not very clear, then draw a rough diagram and and circle the body to which you are applying the Newton's laws. This helps a lot. Consider the body as a point. So we have to forget the complexities in the shape and structure of the body and take the body as a point to which we are applying the Newton's laws. Second step, you identify all the forces acting on the body. So there could be number of forces which might be acting on the body. For example, its weight always works downward. If it is in contact with some other surface, then there has to be a normal reaction. If any rope or rod is attached and pulling the body, there has to be tension. There could be some friction. So identify all the forces which are working on the body. Draw free body diagram. In a free body diagram, we generally take the body as a point and we draw all the forces acting on the body with their directions. We draw the force vectors in such a way that the tail of the force vectors touch the point mass or towards the point mass. A very important thing that must be noted that you have to ignore the forces applied by the body. So the body simultaneously might be applying some force on some other bodies you have to ignore it when we apply newton's laws of motion we are only interested in forces acting on the body and not by the body you need to show the acceleration vector it is not a force you need to draw it separately third stage once you have drawn the free body diagram you can decide your coordinate axis and draw them one should choose the coordinate axis in such a way that the maximum number of forces are aligned along the axis. In most of the problems, this strategy will work. In a very few odd problems, this strategy may not work. So be careful. Any force vector which is not aligned along any axis, we vectorially resolve that force vector along the axis. Once all the forces are drawn along x, y and z axis, we can write Newton's laws for each axis independently. So we can write sigma fx is equal to max, sigma fy is equal to may and sigma fz is equal to maz where ax, ay and az are the three components of accelerations along x, y and z axis. After you have written the step number 5, it may lead to formation of simultaneous equations. So you need to solve those simultaneous equations if needed. So let's get back to the horse and cart problem. 
A horse is hitched to a wagon. Horse pulls the wagon. Since the wagon pulls back the horse just as hard as the horse pulls on the wagon, why doesn't the wagon remain in equilibrium? That is, if it is at rest, it should remain at rest. Or if it is moving at a constant speed along a straight line, then it should continue to do so without accelerating. So let's apply some of our problem solving tactics to this horse and cart problem. Here is the sketch of our system. Our first point was isolate the body and consider it as a point. So you can see that in this situation there are two bodies. One is the cart and one is the horse. So what we can do is we can isolate them one by one. So we will take the cart first. So we will ignore the horse for the time being. We will focus only on the cart. In our mind we will take it as a point mass. Now we list down all the forces which are working on the body. So what are the forces that can work on the cart? So cart's weight will work in the downward direction. The normal reaction from the ground will work in the upward direction. And the it is connected to horse by a rod. So when the horse tends to pull, there will be a tension generated in the rod. This tension will work in the forward direction. So we can now draw the free body diagram. Weight of the cart working downward. Normal reaction on the cart working upward. And the force of tension by the horse on the cart is working towards the right side. Now let's take the horse as the point mass and repeat the same exercise. Assuming that the horse is standing, according to the first strategy, horse is a point mass. Let us identify all the forces acting on the body that is on the horse. So its weight works downward WH. Normal reaction from the ground NH work upward and tension in this rod which is connected to cart will work in the rear direction. So this is how the free body diagram of horse will look like. However, if the same horse instead of standing if it is moving forward then how would the free body diagram look like so if the horse is moving forward then it generally pushes the earth beneath its feet in the diagonally backward direction this way and therefore earth offers a reaction force in this direction in the given direction so earth is going to apply a reaction force in this direction the net reaction force on the horse can be drawn in this particular direction which i would call it as reaction from the earth on the horse so you saw this change when the horse was standing this reaction force was working in the upward direction but when the horse is moving forward then it pushes the earth in the diagonally backward direction and the earth applies a reaction force which is in diagonally forward direction. So far in this problem, most of our forces were either vertical or horizontal. So we can resolve this vector along the horizontal component and vertical component. Let me call the horizontal component as F and vertical component as NHV. Now since we have resolved NH into its component, we don't need it. So we can delete it from the diagram. Weight of the horse will work in the downward direction while the tension in the rod that attaches to the cart will work in the backward direction. So these are the forces which are working on the horse if it is moving in the forward direction. So far we have taken the cart as the point mass and we have seen what are the forces acting on the cart. We have seen horse as the point mass and we have seen what are the forces acting on the horse. Now we will take entire horse cart system as a point mass and we will see what force is acting on it. If you take entire horse cart system as single point mass then you will find there are a number of forces which will cancel out each other. So for example, normal reaction on cart from the earth should balance 
the weight of the cart because the cart is neither accelerated upward nor it is accelerated downward so both of these forces must balance each other in a very similar way the horse is neither accelerated upward nor it is accelerated downward so normal force working on the horse must balance its weight so these two forces will cancel out similarly tension in the rod that connects horse and cart is going to be the same at all the points so thc must be equal and opposite to tch so if i take the entire system of a horse and cart as a point mass then the only force is the forward force small f since this force is unbalanced it will cause an acceleration and horse cart system will not remain in equilibrium it will accelerate in the forward direction the acceleration of the horse cart system is given by this forward force upon total mass of the horse cart system so this is how a typical horse and cart system accelerates forward the horse pulls the wagon and wagon pulls back the horse these forces are equal and opposite but still the system moves forward because earth applies a force on the horse which has a component in the forward direction rest of the problem solving tactics we will practice in the next video thank you